So welcome to, uh, to an introduction to my bow, my arrows, and my setup. So the bow is a, a Diamond Bow Tech 2008. Uh, great bow, <clears throat> very smooth, very fast. This is about 70 pounds. It's set up right at 70 pounds. Here's my friend. I call him Bucky. I shot him with a muzzle loader. I didn't actually shoot him with this bow. I've got um, three does on this with this bow with this setup. Uh, very fast, very uh, smooth. And um, here's a limb savers, um, you know, recoil reducer. Here's this a regular old string stopper I got at Bass Pro. I need to put some wax on here. Stock strings, very stock strings. I've got a, a um, QAD Ultra Rest Hunter for the Arrow Rest. It's a nice drop away. Again, it's like two, 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 uh, two years old, but very effective, very good. Haven't had any problems with it at all. It doesn't make any noise. Uh, that's a that's a plus. Um, I've got a HHA optimizer bow sight with uh, for you guys that that know bows. Um, you'll notice that there's a there's an odd looking piece on that sight, and that's actually what's called a, a no peep. And what it does is it makes sure that your anchor point is in the, the correct place. There's no peep sight on this bow. There's my D-loop, my little knock, you know where the knock is, but you'll see there's no peep sight. I don't know how these got ripped off of there, but they're not on there. But at any rate, there's no peep sight on the string at all. Just some serving around. Uh, the, the, to protect the string from the string stop, but this thing right here prevents. You know, I don't. I don't need a peep sight. It's really nice. Um, it it's a little. You know, <clears throat> if I practice a lot, my anchor point is in the same spot. But you know, if I don't practice as much, then my anchor spot kind of it, it's not consistent. And so this this helps that to be consistent. I, I like that a lot gives you a few more hours of daylight in terms of uh, um, compared to, to using a peep sight. <clears throat> this is a you can dial your distance up with this uh, with this setup. I've written on there you can't really see it but the needle is right here. It goes from I've got a set from 10, 15, 20 and it goes all the way up to, theoretically, it goes up to 60 yards. Well, really, 50, 58 yards. But <clears throat> I've never shot that far. Later videos, um, I'm going to try and work my way up to that point. I'm going back to Afghanistan, so <clears throat> this will be my last series of videos until probably next spring. But what you'll see me shooting at, hopefully, before I leave in the next few days... I'll work my way up to 35 or 30 or 35. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> I work my way up to 30 or 35. So that's kind of the bow in a nutshell. Um, nice thin grip, and just a few. The, some of the changes. One of the changes I want to make in the next few days is how my hand sits on here. Currently. My hand sits on it pretty loose. I heard a, a tip where a guy was talking about, you know, putting the hand on there so loose that it kind of almost pretending like there's thorns on the back side of the bow handle. And I want my fingers, I'm, I'm not going to use the, the wrist retainer, but I want my fingers to just barely touch. Right now, my hand doesn't touch at all, actually. I kind of leave my hand pretty loose on there. Um, I really want to make sure that, that my hold on that bow is consistent. And, you know, the thing about archery is that your hand 
and your hand, your left hand, or your, your bow hand, is the only thing that's going to be touching the bow. So that's, that's the thing I really want to be consistent with in order to get out to the ranges that I want to get out to, to uh, safely harvest the animal. So let me show you my, the rest of the stuff. I got my Nikon's Archer's Choice, my rangefinder. I got a nice mechanical release, about 80 bucks. True Ball Extreme, really nice. A uh, little on the expensive side, but a real quality piece of machinery right there. And the arrows I'm using, they only have, I have about three arrows from the original setup from two years ago. I shoot a lot. And I've lost a few, <laughs> both hunting and also, you know, burying them in the trees. Um, um, I've lost a few in the woods out behind my house. But the setup I like is this is the ICS bow hunter. This is the the set that the bow came with. The spine is three three hundred and forty, nine point three grains per inch. Uh, the next set of arrows that I got for this bow are right here. Um, Beeman. Same same brand. But I went with a heavier arrow because... The reason I like the heavier arrow <clears throat> is because... Uh, it quiets... It, you know, more. I, I like more material. More material on a bow. My bow is a little on the heavy side. More material on the arrow quiets the the bow a little bit. Um, more material also makes you, at least in the bow, makes the machine a little more stable than a, than a lighter bow. So it's a little more forgiving. Uh, so a heavier arrow quiets the bow a little bit as, as com compared to a much lighter arrow. So this is the second arrow that I bought and this is the third. So again, I went with the same spine, obviously, the same flex and arrow, but I went with 10.2 .2 grains per inch. Um, in order to keep things consistent, you know, what you practice with, you should also obviously hunt with. So the hunting gear, hunting arrows that I hunt with, and I'll show you the uh, mechanicals, the mechanical broadheads in a second, are, you know, the same as, same as, um, it's Easton, and Easton Beeman. Easton makes Beeman. They're the ST Epic Real Tree, but 10.2 grains per inch. And I think this is a 26 inch arrow. I've got Rage 2 broadhead on this one. I've lost a few hunting uh, squirrels, and, uh, etc. 125 grains on the end of that. The the weight for that mechanical. Two inch blazer veins regular knocks and um, I just went to Bass Pro and I picked up again the ICS Hunter by Beeman this is a a company or a brand that Easton makes and I went with 10 grains per inch same spine on it uh, and I'm going to start practicing with these. And the reason being is because I want everything to be consistent. So that's the that's my setup. I've got a dozen of these to play with. And uh, the next video you're going to see is me shooting.